The green transition is going to be a better future for us. A cleaner air, safer planet, actually a better way to do things. Uh, our new digital and renewable energy technologies uh, just will mean more uh, opportunity for leisure, uh, for study, for getting things done the way we want to get things done without the congestion, the pollution, and the dangers of climate change. The more people know, the more they are excited, not scared by the dangers, but excited for a better future. The key to decarbonization is zero carbon electricity because this is the core of the new energy system for the world. Wind, solar, hydro, geothermal, nuclear in some countries, but zero carbon power that makes possible new transport that is electrified. It makes possible our cities to run on zero carbon electricity. It makes possible a new hydrogen industry. It makes possible new ways of uh, heavy industrial production that are not so dangerous and polluting as now. So this is the path that needs to be followed. And under the European Green Deal, Europe as a whole should study the best pathway to reach zero carbon electricity by 2050 and to interconnect Europe and its neighbors in North Africa, in the Eastern Mediterranean, in the Middle East, in an interconnected system that will be better for all of the people. The most important international solution is one single word, cooperation. We absolutely must avoid a divided world. Uh, when I hear sometimes American politicians say, it's us and them, it's democracies versus autocracies, it's America versus China, I say, no, this is not the right approach. The right approach is global cooperation. The war in Ukraine, too, should be ended at the negotiating table, not on the battlefield. We shouldn't say, no, we're never going to deal with Russia again. That kind of thinking of a divided world, of our side, the other side, will not get us to the future that we want. A world of global cooperation will get us there. Sustainable development means building a world that is prosperous, that is socially just, and that is environmentally sustainable. It's not an option. It's the only future that's going to make sense for humanity. When we think in those terms, we can prevent war because we realize, you know, we're all on the same side of this. We're all struggling with the same challenges. It's not really us or Russia or China or other places. It really is all of us together. So the mindset, the logic of sustainable development says, no, it's not a trade-off. It's the way we have to go for the future that we want. Now, of course, on specific challenges, we have to look at specific causes. We have to look at the underlying detailed phenomena, whether it is climate change, whether it is a pandemic, whether it is uh, the war in Ukraine, which didn't just come out of nowhere, it came out of history. We have to understand that history so that we can find fair and lasting solutions. But the overall framework of sustainable development is the sensible approach because it says we are all in this together in a highly interdependent world. The Siena International School on Sustainable Development is an absolutely wonderful initiative. It is thrilling to be together with <coughs> such star energetic, committed uh, young people who want to build the better future. And the school is helping to give them the tools, helping to empower these young leaders who are coming from all over the world, will go back home, will help to lead transformations. So I was transfixed when I heard one uh, amazing initiative after another being generated and developed at the school and with the tools that uh, these uh, students, these young leaders, will now be using to promote sustainable development. 
the fact that they will also be part of a network, so not only empowered with new analytics, new understanding, new tools as they go home, but with a network that will be part of their uh, life and professional backing is an added remarkable addition of the Siena International School. It, it's a great accomplishment. Young people are obviously absolutely essential to the transformations that we need. First of all, young people understand better than old people what's really at stake. They know they're going to be living through the 21st century. And what kind of century is it going to be? Collapsing ecosystems, uh, climate out of control, conflict, poverty, mass migration, mass displacement, or a world that uses these technologies to build a, a safe, secure, more prosperous, happier future. They know this is all about them. When I look around the world and see septuagenarian and octogenarian leaders, even in my own country, because our political system right now is dominated by people in their late 70s or early 80s, I say, come on, let young people come in, play the role. They know what is needed much better. And they also know how to use the new digital technologies. Uh, when I really need tech support, I ask my six-year-old granddaughter. Uh, that's where I'm gonna get the solutions. They say, Grandpa, you do this. I, okay, young people know because they are the citizens of a new world. And our job, those of us with experience, uh, I've been teaching for 42 years. I've seen some things that work. I've seen a lot that doesn't work. Our job is to help give the tools and the empowerment to young people that are really gonna make the changes.